Welcome to the Automation World Get Your Questions Answered podcast, where we connect with industry experts to get the answers you need about industrial automation technologies. I'm David Greenfield, Director of Content for Automation World, and the question we'll be answering in this episode is, how do you determine whether to use a programmable logic controller, a programmable automation controller, or an industrial PC for industrial control applications? Joining me today to answer this question is Nate Kay, Senior Project Engineer with Industrial Control Systems Integrator, Martin CSI. So thanks for joining me for this discussion, Nate. Hey, good morning, David. To start this discussion, let's just start by defining what constitutes a programmable logic controller, a PLC, a programmable automation controller, also often referred to as a PAC or a PAC, and an industrial PC. Well, I'd say to start off in the simplest terms, uh, PLC is a programmable logic controller, and then the PAC is a programmable automation controller. So as the name might imply, a PAC will do a lot of things that a PLC does, but it does a lot more as well. It has a lot of additional features built into it. And then finally, an industrial PC um, is taking it to the next level. A lot of industrial PCs can run the same software that you would find on a pack on an automation controller, but it offers the full features that a PC brings to it. So from your perspective as an industrial system integrator, what do you see as being the biggest differences in terms of feature functionality and performance among these three different types of controllers? Yeah, I think it might help to go back into the history a little bit of some of these devices. Um, A PLC is a programmable logic controller. Um, So as its name implies, it's programmed using, uh, for the most part, ladder logic. Now, historically, ladder logic was written to resemble the wiring diagrams um, used by electricians and technicians. So it has that uh, wiring diagram structure and format to it. Uh, PLCs are typically used to control I'd say a relatively small number of I.O., analog or discrete. And in a PLC, the physical I.O. is often tightly coupled both to the programming language and to the PLC hardware itself. Um, With PLCs, they can communicate with network devices such as drives, but it often requires, requires adding on additional modules to do that to expand their capability. Um, so an example of a PLC or common example is the Allen Bradley MicroLogix controller. Now, a PAC or programmable automation controller takes the PLC to the next level. It includes many of the basic functions that a PLC has, but it often has more advanced features. Uh, for example, PACs are not just limited to the ladder logic language. Uh, They can be programmed in languages such as uh, structured text, function block diagrams, and flowcharts. In a pack, the memory is typically tag-based, whereas in a PLC, the memory structure is often address-based. Packs also inherently use um, standard protocols such as Ethernet, so they can efficiently communicate with a wide variety of network devices. Uh, PACs are also modular, so they can communicate with remote I.O., um, remote panels um, and devices like drives, and they can also handle complex applications like motion, advanced process control, and even integrated safety. So an example of a PAC um, would be the Allen Bradley Control Logix or the Opto22 Snap PAC controller. And then finally, the industrial PC, a lot of those can be programmed to run the same software, the same control software that you would run on a pack. But as the name implies, it runs on a full-blown personal computer or industrial computer. And with that comes the operating system, such as uh, Windows or Linux. Okay. Thanks for explaining that, Nate. You know, one thing just to back up, you mentioned in explaining the difference between a PLC and a PAC, you noted one of one of the differences is that PACs tend to use address-based connections versus tag-based. Can you explain that a little more? Yeah. So the address-based um, memory structure is predefined, 
A lot of our listeners may be familiar with the Allen Bradley Slick 500s, where it comes with a predefined range of integers, timers, uh, Boolean addresses, integers. Um, it's the same with Siemens and Mitsubishi. But a tag-based controller is different in that you're not confined to using the predetermined address ranges. You can give an address, um, any name you want, create it on the fly, uh, give it a type like uh, double integer Boolean. It more closely resembles higher level programming languages like C, where you actually create variables um, as needed. Okay, thanks for explaining that. So as dedicated control devices, the PLC and the PAC will, of course, be the most similar. So how should end users assess which one of those to use based on their application? Well, I'd say PLCs are well-suited for standalone machines. They're robust. They're simple. They're also helpful because uh, sometimes maintenance or maintenance personnel or technicians come from a non-controls or a non-programming background. So PLCs um, are oftentimes easier for for these ones to for these individuals to to use to troubleshoot if they're familiar with technical drawings, but maybe not so much the programming itself. Um, PACs are often well-suited for controlling larger processes and for integrating things like safety, motion, uh, distributed I.O., and network communications. And, and what would you say is it about the PAC that enables it to do some of these larger, more complex automation tasks versus a PLC? Well, a lot of PACs come with these features built into it. Um, you could get a PLC to talk to network devices, do some of these higher level functions. But a lot of times with a PLC, you have to add on hardware modules uh, to perform those type of types of tasks. Whereas a PAC is designed out of the box to communicate with network devices, you know, integrate safety motion. A lot of PACs come with their function blocks that deal specifically with motion and safety. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that, Nate. So now PC based, industrial PC based control is of course a more recent development since the advent of the PLC, but it's been around for decades now. And I know we spoke earlier about the differences between these three types of controllers, but what do you see as being the principal differences between industrial PCs and PLCs and PACs? Yeah, I'd say a couple differences are a PC, industrial PC can for the most part run the software that you would run on a pack, perform the same operations. But a PC brings to the table the addition of uh, running middleware on it. You can run databases, protocol converters, recipe managers. You could even run your SCADA and MES software on the same industrial PC that you're using as the automation controller. So it brings a host of being able to expand the capabilities of the pack. Uh, run a full suite of software on it. But there's also a little bit of a trade-off as well. Uh, industrial PCs typically run an operating system like Windows or Linux. And oftentimes those operating systems are not optimized for high performance and deterministic industrial applications. It's not to say that an industrial PC can't be optimized, but it may take some work, whereas a PAC or a PLC they come that way out of the box. And as we did when discussing the PLC and the PAC, how would you suggest that end users determine if an industrial PLC, and excuse me, an industrial PC is the right type of controller for their application? Well, I'd look at the size of the application. Industrial PCs are well suited for larger processes. And I'd say one question that could be asked is, if I use an industrial PC, does it allow me to simplify things? perhaps the hardware design, the network design, uh, the software that we're using. Um, really what the intent of the design, we want it to be as simple as possible, but not simpler. So if an industrial PC allows us to achieve a design that in the end is simpler, more robust, more cost effective than just a pack, then it's a, a good thing to look at. But oftentimes a pack could be well suited for the application. And really it comes down to what things do we need to do beyond 
what a pack inherently does. If we get into adding middleware, databases, MES applications, uh, that's where it might make sense to start looking at the capabilities that an industrial PC would bring. Okay, so just to wrap things up, Nate, you know, is there anything based on your experience working with uh, end users in the manufacturing industries that you'd like to add, you know, based on making this decision about what type of controller to use uh, to add to this discussion? Yeah, I'd say um, we want to look at what really allows us to achieve the best design, the simplest design for our application. If we're looking at a standalone machine, um, a PLC may be right for it. If we need to look at motion, safety, uh, controlling remote I.O., a pack is often the way to go. And then if we really need to layer on additional features and software uh, beyond the pack, that's when we might start looking at the industrial PC. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me for this podcast, Nate. And thanks, of course, to all of our listeners. And please keep watching this space for more installments of Automation World Get Your Questions Answered. And remember to visit our website at automationworld.com to stay on top of the latest industrial automation technology insights, trends, and news.